as if we went, like we, we are in a time where it is happening in, a, in, a, in another country. But the fact is that it's, it happens here too. Okay, yes. so that's why there's a need for us to look at it. So what we are going to, we'll look at what is with in general. We'll look at some statistics about rape, okay, globally, and then now, now uh, down to Ghana. We'll look at uh, victims, who are the main victims of rape, who are the perpetrators of rape, the causes, and then the effects. Okay, yes. So, I would like to start with uh, the definition of what rape is. Okay, so rape is when sexual intercourse is non-consensual. It means that the parties that are involved in the act haven't agreed. Okay. And, or it's when the person forces another person to have sex against his or her will. His emphasis on his or her. So it means that rape can happen to both males and then females. Another uh, definition for rape is, is a type of sexual assault, usually involving sexual intercourse or other forms of sexual penetration carried out against a person without the person's consent. Okay. And then the act may be carried out by using physical force to force someone, or you use coercion, uh, coercion or you uh, usually when people have authority and then they use the authority they have to sexually assault someone or against a person who is incapable of giving consent that's someone who is not in the position to say yes I agree have sex with me or I don't agree don't have sex with me okay so and people who fall in this category are people who are unconscious okay so when someone is drunk when someone is drunk, the person is not in the right frame of mind to give consent, to tell you that yes, I agree. Maybe the person may say yes, I agree, but because of the intoxication, that may, will not be taken as consent, okay? And then we have a incapacitation, where someone is incapacitated, where someone is sick, okay? We've heard news about uh, patients who are raped, uh, maybe they may be in coma or something, they are unconscious and then they are raped. Okay, so the person is incapacitated or has an intellectual disability. Okay, the best example I can use to explain this is uh, people who are mentally ill. Okay, or you have uh, this uh, children who have uh, uh, Down syndrome. Okay, they are mentally incapacitated. So they can't give consent, okay? Or any, any person who is below the legal age of consent, anybody, anybody who is below the legal age consent. So now let's move ahead and then look at, I keep mentioning consent, consent, consent. So what is consent, okay? So consent occurs when one person voluntarily agrees to a proposal or or desires of another. When the person voluntarily agrees to the, the proposal to have sexual intercourse with someone. Okay. And then I mentioned uh, age of consent. In Ghana, the age of consent is 16 years. 16 years. So if you have sex with anybody who is below the age of 16 years, it is considered as uh, illegal sex. Yes. So, I don't know, you may have a girlfriend who is 15 years that you are having sex with. Under our laws, it's illegal. Okay, because she hasn't reached the consent age. This is for Ghana. When you look at worldwide, the consent rate, uh, age range, uh, ranges from 8 to 21, depending on which country you are in. Okay. So, in Asian countries, for example, the consent age is between 8 and then 16. Okay. Then when you go to uh, certain European countries, the consent age is 16 to 18. Okay.
Okay. So there's a difference between consent age and then marriage age. In Ghana, you can give consent only when you are about 16 or above. And then you can get married when you are 18. So there's, there's a difference there. Okay. So let's move on. But let's note that in uh, certain countries, there's no consent age. There's no consent age. What they do is that they make uh, sex illegal outside marriage. So that means that if a girl marries at the age of six, she can have sex. Once she's married, she can have sex. Okay. However, there, there are talks uh, uh, around like, reviewing these uh, laws in those countries. Okay. Now let's move on and then look at um, who are the victims of rape. Remember I mentioned earlier that rape can happen to both men and then women. However, worldwide, sexual violence is primarily committed by males against females. Sexual violence is primarily committed by males against females. Okay? And then, when you come to globally, 35% of women experience sexual violence in their lifetime. And then when you come down to Ghana, in the uh, research conducted by the Ghana Family Life and Health, uh, uh, there's a, a study called the Ghana Family Life and Health Study, which was conducted in 2015. And the findings show that 30% of women in Ghana ex experience sexual violence. Okay. And then, um, 20, Twenty-three percent of men also experience sexual violence, but the difference is that sexual violence, most majority of the sexual violence that happen to women, are are perpetrated by people they know. It happens in the domestic setting. Majority of the of the sexual violence happens in the domestic setting. So it means that it happens at home. And then for the for the male, most of the sexual violence against them happens outside the home. So according to the uh, United Nations Women's Global Database of Violence Against Women, it says that 50 million adolescent girls, and by adolescents it means from 15 to 19, worldwide have experienced forced sex at some point in their life. 15 million. Adolescents have experienced forced sex in their life. And then he says that in the vast majority of countries, adolescent girls, girls are most at risk of forced sex. So now we are looking at victims. Who are the victims? So like, pay attention to the statistics I'm giving. So it will give you an idea of who are the victims of rape. And then it also says that 72%, we know, we know uh, trafficking. Most trafficking cases end in sexual exploitation. Most of trafficking cases that happen. And trafficking is when people are moved across borders against their will. Okay. So it says that 72% of trafficking victims are women and girls. 72% are women and girls. And then when you take every five trafficked women, four of them are sexually exploited. They are forced to have sex. And then when you take every four trafficked girls, three of them are forced to have sex. So it means that out of all the women, uh, all the women that are uh, trafficked, when you take nine women, seven of, seven of them are sexually exploited or forced to have sex. In the Middle East and North America alone, 40 to 60% of women have ever experienced street-based sexual harassment, which in most cases lead to rape, actual rape itself. Okay. And then, uh, in the same region, that's the Middle East and the North Africa, 31 to 64 percent of men have said that they have engaged in some form of sexual violence. They have said that they have, they have engaged some form of uh, sexual violence at a point in their life. And then, 
Uh, let's draw our, I want us to, I want to draw your attention to uh, the recent cases of, uh, until recently, I didn't know that babies are sexually assaulted too. Okay. I kept mentioning women and girls, women and girls. I just want to draw your attention that, yes, babies are also part of the victims of rape. Okay. And that, that the incidence of uh, babies being sexually molested is going up. Okay. Now let's move on and then look at who are the perpetrators? Who are the rapists? Okay. So, um, studies have shown that rape by strangers is usually less common than rape by people you know. Rape by strangers is less compared to rape, uh, rape by people that you know. So it means that most of the rape that happen are perpetrated by people we know. I've mentioned earlier that uh, most rape happen in the domestic setting. Okay. And then another uh, statistic is that sexual violence against women and girls are mainly perpetrated by domestic relations. I've said that already. And then 22.9% of sexual violence against men are domestic related and then 28.6% of sexual violence against men was by this this is a uh, this pertains to, pertains to Ghana. So I got this uh, information from the survey that I mentioned, the study I mentioned, Ghana Family Life Health Study. Okay. So it said that 20 22.9% of sexual sexual violence against women was done in the domestic setting. And then 28.6% of sexual violence against men was done outside the home, okay? Which means that it is our family members that are raping us the most, okay? And, and when, when you look at who are these people, okay? So we have fathers raping their daughters. We have brothers raping their sisters. We have aunties preying on their nephews, okay? I'm yet to come across data about female on female rape. I haven't found any data like that. Females raping females. Okay. Right. But there's data on male male on male rape. That is what we call the pseudo. And it's it's in Ghana here. Okay. And so we have pastors, um, we have our cousins, our uncles, teachers. Teachers are raping students. Okay. And when you look at these people, some are educated, some are illiterate, uh, some are malam, some are pastors, some are imams, people in authority. Remember we said people use authority to rape people. When they are in a position of authority, they use it against a vulnerable person. So this the conclusion that I can draw from this is that no one can be tra trusted because rape is happening within the home and then outside the home. So you can't trust anyone. You have to tread, uh, tread cautiously. Okay. Now let's look at uh, laws. Are there laws against rape? Okay. So we we'll look at whether there are laws in Ghana and then globally whether there are laws. Okay. So. Globally, 154 countries have laws on sexual harassment, including rape. Including rape. And they are, they are, but the application varies from country to country to country. In Asian countries, for example, if a man rapes a girl, okay, the, sent, uh, the sent, uh, sentencing ranges between I think three years to about five years. Okay. In certain cases, when when the girl gets pregnant, she is forced to marry the rapist. So the charges are if, if charges are taken up against him, the charges will be dropped and then you marry the girl. Okay. And let's move on. 
in Ghana, we have the Domestic Violence Act. That's Act 732. And it criminalizes sexual violence. And it was adopted in 2007. That's in February. Okay. And then we have the Sustainable Development Goal, number five. SDG number five. It aims at eliminating all forms of violence against women and girls in the public and then the uh, private spheres. And it's, this involves rape. Okay. And then we have the Protection for Sexual Exploitation, Sexual Abuse, and Sexual Harassment. And this is for all genders. And this uh, by the UN Funds for Population Activities. So now let's move on to uh, courses. What courses we? What are the courses of we? Okay. So look at uh, what I have done is that I have looked for scientific reasons, like scientific explanations for why rape happens, or for, for the causes of rape. Okay. When I'm done with that, then we we'll look at the other reasons that we give when people get. Get rape. Okay. So, one key cause of rape is when there's conflict. Okay. So you 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 recall for those who are familiar with the Rwandan uh, genocide, you 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 remember that you, you find out that rape was one of the two that they were using against each other. Okay. And then uh, when when we take like. Uh, the conflict, recent conflicts that have, that, have, that have happened. Recently, we had allegations that some American troops that went to uh, Syria, okay, for peacekeeping or whatever, they, uh, they were involved in rape. They raped some people. Okay, yes. So when there's conflict, it increases rape. Another cause of rape is uh, anger. Anger is another person. Please pay attention to all the causes I'm, I'm, I'm giving. At the end, we'll draw a conclusion. Okay. So anger. People who are angry. Okay. So they use rape as punishment to whoever they are angry with. Okay. And their aim is to hurt the person. The aim is to hurt, humiliate the person, and then hurt the person. So anger. And then we have power. We have power. When people want to exert their power on someone, they use rape. Okay. And this this cause of rape is also called the correctional. Uh, it's, it's called like it's seen as a correctional, uh, whatever. Okay. To so let's say um, you offend someone. Okay. Or you do something wrong. And when they want to, the person wants to correct you, they use rape to correct you. Okay. And they do that to exert their authority. Okay. And then exert their power to let you know your level. Okay. So the second one is power. And then we have the uh, sadism or the, sad the sadistic way, uh, rape, rapist. Okay. So this is someone. These people, they, also, they combine power and then anger together, okay? And then uh, they, they combine power and then anger, and then they use it to act out their, their evil, okay? And what, what happens to these people is that uh, when, they, when they see their victim suffer, that is, that's what turns them on, okay? When their victim is suffering, when they are torturing the person, when they are beating the person, when they are hurting the person, that's what turns them on more. Okay? So the ultimate for statistic rapists is that they end up murdering the victim. And that is the climax for them. Okay? So they, they will end up killing you. Okay. And then we have the The one that is say uh, we say it is attitudinal, it's attitudinal based. Okay. 
So this happens because of what we have, uh, people have learned, how they've been socialized from the beginning, the things they have learned around them. So it, become, it becomes an attitude, okay? So things like, they believe that women are sex objects. That is the, what the person has been exposed to from childhood. So he learns it and it becomes an attitude. Okay, so you see a woman and then what he sees is a sex object. So you take sex from her by force. Okay, and then uh, they believe also that men's sexual desires are uncontrollable. Okay, there's a belief, general belief among sex that men can, cannot control their uh, listing. That is why a man will tell you that he has blue balls. Okay, so you have to give him sex by force because he can't control himself. Okay, this is according to science. Okay, and then we have uh, the feeling of entitlement. The feeling of entitlement, and this is predominant in a Muslim setting. Okay, I don't know if you said the year will help me, but there's. Hadith that says that even when a woman is sitting on a camel and her husband demands sex, she must give it to him on top of the camel. Okay, going up ahead, Hadith that says that when a woman refuses her husband's sex, the angels will curse her from the evening till the next day. Okay, so the feeling of entitlement. And then also the feeling that women are dangerous and un unpredictable. That's what some people have learned over time. That women are dangerous. They are unpredictable. Okay. That is why a man will, in a relationship with a, with a lady, will spend money on her. But at the back of his, on his mind, he's unsure whether the woman will stay with him or not. So he will have sex with her to like make up for the money he has spent, or the time he has spent with them. Okay. And then we have the, we have a, a doctors, they, 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 they have an explanation for why people will, will commit a, a way. And they call it the neuropsychological process. Okay, so this, all, this happens in their mind, it has to do with their mind. So when people have difficulty in regulating themselves, they have difficulty in regulating themselves. They have problem with select, selecting actions. They, they can't select which actions to perform at a time. Okay? And then, uh, it says that when sexual aggression are, se sexual aggressors are unable to understand their emotional states, they are, they are unable to uh, understand their emotional state. Okay, so what happens is that when a situation presents itself, when they see a chance for rape, because they can't select which action to do, they can't regulate themselves. Okay, they can't go, uh, manage their emotions. So they are triggered by the slightest chance. So the slightest thing. That, that's what we're explaining why a grown-up man will try to have sex with a baby. Okay, he can't select which action to perform. He can't regulate his, himself. He can't uh, manage his emotions. And then, you happen to leave your baby with him. So he sees the small chance. You know, most of us, if, if we will be sincere to ourselves, we see women and then the the thought that comes into our mind is that, oh, like, sex with this woman will be, will be enjoyable. But then because we are able to control our emotions and our thinking, we are able to select which action to perform, okay? So immediately, we are able to take our mind off that. But this person cannot do that. This person cannot do that. Okay, so that's the neuropsychological process. And then we have the uh, deviant sexual preferences. There are people that, they, for them, 
they are inclined towards deviant sexual behavior. Okay, so when they see they see a video of someone being raped, that is what turns them off. Okay, so deviant sexual behavior is what turns them off, and they learn it over time, so it becomes part part of them, and then they try to play out what they, they've learned over time. And then when people have personality disorder, they have personality disorder. That is, uh, mostly people who are able to, to establish and then maintain a relationship, enjoyable, intimate relationship with people. I don't know, I'm yet to see that in, in, like, in real life, but from the movies you watch, you see someone who appears like to be a nerd. He's anti so he doesn't mingle with people. They are saying that those people are likely to win others because they can't establish and then maintain a relationship with anyone and they have sexual needs. So they will force some, uh, someone and then have sex with the person. And then we have insecure attachment. Insecure attachment begins from childhood. Okay, when ch uh, children are abused, research shows that most children who are abused in their childhood grow up to also abuse other people. Okay. So, essentially, uh, children from uh, divorce, the parents are not there. Okay. So, they have issues with attachment. The parents are not always there. They are living with mom and dad, and then all of a sudden, dad goes away, or mom, mom goes away. So they have issues with attachment. Okay. And then, and these people tend to have a problem with self-esteem. They cannot develop relationship with others. And then they misinterpret a social interaction. They misinterpret social inter interaction. Because they didn't get the love and then the attention. Okay? When you show them a little care, they interpret it to mean that you want sex. Okay, so we have uh, those people. And then we have the uh, narcissist personality. Narcissist uh, personality. And these people, they interpret refusal to have sex as an insult. These are people who have uh, self-esteem issues. Okay, they have self-confidence issues. Okay. So when they they see a woman and then they they make advances and the woman refuses, they see it as an insult. So they get angered. Okay, and out of the anger, they will want to punish the person. Okay. And then. And it says that uh, usually narcissistic personality, which leads to be mostly happen in the in the family setting. Okay. They do it to people they know. They usually do it to people they know, so that if he uh, he tries to date a woman and then she says no, the next thing is that he will ask her out as a friend. Okay, and then when they go out, you you rip and use that as the excuse. And these people, they don't see uh, rape as their fault. They see it as a fault of whoever they have raped. They don't see it as their fault. Okay. I've, I've already spoken about uh, drug, uh, alcohol, being uh, a way by which someone can fall victim. Also, the perpetrator can also use alcohol as his basis, drunkenness as his basis to assault someone. And scientists are saying that people who do this, they, they do it intentionally. They know what they are doing. Okay? And it says that people who get drunk and then uh, assault people as a result, 
they, they don't do it by mistake, but it is a learned behavior. And the reason they do it, that is that they know that at the end of the day, you will not blame them. You will blame the alcohol. So they hide behind alcohol and then commit their, their crime. Okay. So now, let's move to, this is, this is a, This is like the scientific explanation of why people will wear someone. So now let's come to the social explanation to why someone will be wearing or why someone will wear another person. And this brings us to the article I published, okay, that brought about the, the need for this discussion. Okay. And uh, growing up, Everything that I wrote in the article is real life experience. There are things that have happened. Okay, so when I was in uh, primary school, one of my classmates, and you know, primary school those days, like you, you are below the age of consent. Remember, the age of consent is 16. Okay, she, she, she was nine years, she was raped by her teacher. She didn't say it at home, okay? But the explanation was that she started falling sick at home. She started falling sick. And it wasn't even her parents who found out that she had been raped. It was a neighbor that saw that this girl, like, she has become withdrawn. She doesn't play. She's not as bubbly and lively as she used to be. So it's the neighbor that came to complain to the parent that, check your daughter, there's something wrong with her. Okay, so from like asking asking the, the girl, then she said that this is what my teacher did to me. Okay, and then the explanation at that time that they gave is that the girl is a small child, nine, nine, nine years old, she's small, and she should have said no. This is someone who is below the age of and the teacher is supposed to know better. Okay, so this is one, I'm taking this as a, the, she being a small girl, and then her, her inability to have said no, as being so, uh, society's explanation for why that rape happened. Okay, and then we move on. My, my friend, my friend's two, two, I think, yeah, two-year-old daughter. She left her with her cousin to go out. And then when she came and entered the room, she saw that the uncle is making the girl suck his, his penis. And she said, she said, she said that before then, when she bathes the child and then she tries to wash down there, the girl flinches like it's, it's like she's in pain. So she confronted the brother and then she made the, it known to the family. And then they started begging her that this is a family matter, let's settle it at home. She didn't listen. She went to report to, to the police. By the time she and the police would come back, this cousin of hers has left home. She later on heard that it was one of the aunties that gave him that advice and even gave him money that he should go. Okay. And the question they started asking is that why asking her was that why did you leave your daughter with your cousin? This is someone you trust. Why did you leave your daughter with your cousin? So that was what society was asking. So society's explanation for that rape is that she left her daughter with her cousin. So he, he was right to have raped her. Okay. Then we move on. Um, somewhere in 2005, I went to, I, I, around that summer, then I, I was doing a data collection. So I went to that so much. And they have this sample design that you follow. So when I come to this street, for instance, according to the sample design, I have to enter every fifth house, every fifth house. So I'll be counting. 
So I entered one house, and you know that someone, all the houses are gated. So I entered one house, and I don't know whether, fortunately, or unfortunately, sorry, unfortunately for me, the man was there. Okay, if I should go out and not like take data from that house, it will compromise the findings of the of the research they are doing. So as uh, someone who tries to uphold uh, whatever uh, honesty. So I like I tried to stay there and then take take like I stayed to take the data. And one one thing was that there were doors in the house. So when I knocked the gate, when I rang the bell, the man had to come to the gate and he let me inside. So after taking the data, when I was about leaving, then this man held me back. And you know, he has to have sex with me before I go. Okay. I don't know where the idea came from. I didn't fight with him. I don't know where the idea came from, but I just told him that, oh, my supervisor is standing outside waiting for me. Okay. And I've just texted him that I've finished. I'm sure he'll come asking why. That he should relax. He shouldn't have a rush. I have to, I, I told him that I have told you that I live in Russia just here. I always come to uh, Gold House. There's Gold House in Asuma, right? Those days. I told him that, oh, I always come to Gold House. That even this evening I can meet him there. That should react. When, like, if he forces me this time, like, he will enjoy it. So he should wait. I'll come in the evening. And I gave him my number. And I took his number. Okay. And I don't know, for some, for some reason, he, he believed me that I'll call him in the evening so that we meet. Then he led me outside. And whilst doing that, this, I was very nice to him, like I was pretending to be nice to him. And that, that was what saved me. So when I got out and I went to meet my supervisor, and I told him that, oh, in this particular house that I just came from, the man tried to rape me. And then his immediate response was that, I didn't an alcohol. Why should you go there? When he's the one holding the sampling design, and he knows that I have to go into this house and take data. Okay. So at that material, at that at, in in, uh, in that is, instance, if I had been raped, my 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 supervisor would have said that it's my fault because I went to that house when I was only doing my job. And, and now, now that I think about what it was when I, when I was growing up, that I, I'm thinking about things, I saw that like I was surrounded by people like that. So people, people that you trust, people that live with you. I remember I, w I went to a, I attended is it Ahiyai King? Which one? Which is which? The 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 final one, the Makaranta. I saw everything. That's why I attended. Okay. I remember on one occasion, we closed, we were coming home. I was with my friends. I would be around six, seven, thereabouts. So we were coming back home in the room. So when we were almost in my area, one of my friends said, oh, her uncle lives in this house. So let's pass by and then say hello. I remember when we went inside, all my friends jumped like onto his bed. So I was the only one standing there. And the man was sitting on the sofa. And then he beckoned me to come and sit on his lap. Okay, so whilst I was there and my friends were playing on the bed, then he unzipped. And then he made me sit on him. So like whilst my friends were there, I was sitting on this man. I know that like I thought that he has unzipped himself. But he didn't penetrate me. I don't know what, what, what he was doing. I didn't understand what was going on. It was later on, like when I grew up, and I understood that, oh, so this is what this man did. And if I were there alone, it would have been worse than what, what it is. And fast forward, I remember when I, when I was in my 20s, we were sitting around and then I heard news that oh, that particular man had died. And my immediate response was that I sweet. Okay, because of what he did. 
So these are the people that are around us. These are the people that we have. These are people that you trust. And this is someone who is very respected. When he's passing, you greet my parents. How are you? He comes to pray in our masjid. He has, he has family. Okay, and this is what I have witnessed. This is what he has done to me. Well, how about what he has done to other people? Okay, and I'm sure if I told someone then, the person would have asked me, what did you go to do in this house? For God's sake, I was seven years. I was seven years there about. Okay, society would have asked, what did I go to do there? So they would tell me that if you had raped me, they would say the reason why you raped me is because I went to that house. And then, let's, let's move on to the recent uh, rapes that are happening uh, around us. Uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, we heard about uh, a Nigerian university student. During the lockdown, she went to church to go and study. Actually, she goes to the church every day. So she goes to take the key from the security man, and then she goes to read. And then on one particular day, when she went, like they broke away, and she, like she still hadn't come back to give the key to the security man. So the security man went to check, and then he found her with her clothes pulled up. Then she was bleeding. She was dead. When this news broke, I followed like social media, and most people were saying that why did she go to church to go and study? If she hadn't gone to the church, no one would make her. For God's sake, she, she went to church, church, which is supposed to be the house of God. But they followed her then to make her. Okay. Another incident, incident is uh, with regards to one lady called Bar Baraka. She's also a Nigerian university student. For her, they raped her in her house. They went to her house to rape her and then they killed her. Yesterday, if, if, you, if you watch, uh, if you look at my uh, Facebook page, you see that I post uh, a story about a, a three months old baby who has been raped. Three months has been raped. Three months old has been raped. And that's not the only that's not the only one. Okay. And then society keeps asking questions which uh, seek to put the blame on the one who has been raped. But you realize that from all the uh, scientific reasons I've given for the cause of rape, it's, it doesn't talk about the, the rape victim. It tells you where the problem is coming from. It is, the, it is the rapist who has a problem. It's not the rape victim. Yes. It's the rapist that has a problem, not the rape victim. Okay. Then I hear people make excuses like uh, someone get raped and then they start making excuses like, why was she wearing this dress? She was exposed. She exposed herself. She wasn't decently dressed. When I hear those kind of comments, I tell the person that I actually went to, uh, I did some research, and then I realized that the, Talib, the Taliban, okay, what they do is that they go to people's homes, and then they attack girls, and then they go and rape them. Some run away, some die, some they don't come back to their family again, okay? There's actually a report on a uh, uh, routers. And this incident happened in Afghanistan. Okay. The name that I'm mentioning is, is a, a, it's a pseudonym. It's not the person's real name. Okay. But we call her Zarifa. Okay. And her, in her narration, she said that the head of the Islamic State came to her house that her husband owes him money. 
And when he came, the husband was in, was in home. And he insisted that the woman should pay up. And when she told him that she couldn't pay the money, he made his soldiers take their children to the other room and he raped her. This happened in an Islamic state where the dress code for women is, is you know how they dress. Yes, they cover up. So where, where lies the argument that someone is indecently dressed? Because even when you are covered up, you can be raped. So it's not a problem of uh, the rape victim. It's a rapist. I also uh, researched about uh, sexual fantasies. All of us have it, even if you don't want to accept. All of us have sexual fan fantasies. Okay? Yes. And for some people, their sexual fantasies is to, is to have sex with people in uniform. Some people, when they see someone dressed in a uniform, it turns them on. A nurse, someone wearing a nurse uniform. Turns them on. Someone wearing uh, the doctor's coat to turn him on. Someone wearing a, a military uniform to turn the person on. Okay, so my question is that should we tell all these people to stop wearing their clothes because there's someone who is fantasizing sexually about them? Is that what we should do? That we should tell uh, our children get raped in school too, right? And they are wearing their uniforms. That is the prescribed uniform. Should we let them stop wearing those uniforms? Because they are raped. Okay. And for those who make the argument that uh, when women go out late, or when they go out alone, they'll get raped. So for those people, the question I ask them is that. Uh, the girls that Boko, Boko Haram have, have danced and then raped them, where, where do they go to take them? Do they take them on the streets at night? No. Baraka was raped in her house. She didn't go out late. She was in her home. She wasn't on the street. But someone found a reason to rape her. I'm saying all of this to draw attention to the fact that rape is not the fault of the rape victim. It is not the fault of, fault of the rape, rape victim. It is a choice that the rapist make, makes. Okay, and he should, anyone who rapes should bear the full consequences of his actions. Okay. So, and I also ask people, when someone gets raped and then you make excuses like, oh, was she even a virgin? After all, she wasn't even a virgin. Are you saying that your wife who is not a virgin should be raped? Is that, is that the argument you are making? That anyone who is not a virgin should be raped? People will say that the girl was too beautiful. That's why she got raped. Please, old people to get raped. Old women, they get raped. Old women, they get raped. So it's not about the physical appearance. We have all heard about the uh, sodomy allegations in the Vatican. The, sorry, the Roman Catholic Church. Yes. Boys are sodomized by priests. So I ask. They say when you dress indecently, you'll be raped. So I ask, do those boys wear uh, mini skirts? Or maybe those boys have hips and uh, big behinds. Is that why they get raped? No. No, that's not it. When we go back to the reasons why, the causes of rape, I mentioned power. When people have power, they want to exert their power. When people have deviant sexual uh, desires that they invent, they want to act it out. So it is not about the rape victim. 
And it's, it's about time we stop making those comments. Because if I am a rapist, and then I hear you make comments like, oh, she wasn't properly dressed. What I'll do is that I'm going to target women who are not properly dressed. Because at the end of the day, you stand for me, you make an excuse for me, you make a case for me that she wasn't properly dressed. Okay, I'm sure we've, we've also heard about uh, bestiality, where people have sex with animals. What about an animal who attracts a human being to have sex with? I ask, did the, did the animal dress provocatively? Or the animal was acting seductively, talking with a soft voice? Did the animal go out late? Or was, was, the, was the animal at the wrong place at the wrong time? I have seen the speciality with my eyes when I was there. I told, I, in the, when you read the article, my, my father read sheep. Okay, and one day we saw a guy doing that. So I'm, I'm saying all of this to bring our attention to the fact that rape is not the fault of the, of, the, of the victim. Because rape can happen to anybody, regardless of how you dress, where you are, your age, whether you are beautiful or ugly, it can happen to anybody. So instead of making excuses for uh, rapists, why don't we uh, hold them accountable? Why don't we hold them accountable? For their actions. Because from all indications, it shows that it is them. It's a choice they have made. So they must be held responsible for their for their, for their choices they made. Uh, honor killing. Okay, so I haven't finished with the with the society. This is what I found out. But from my research, I found out that when people live in uh, Violent environment. Okay, so a child grows up and then what all he sees is that one of his parents, because women too can be uh, sorry, violent, one of his parents is trying to assert their power on the other. So they are violent to the person. They are violent to the person. The person doesn't show any, the person doesn't see any show of love and care or concern around him. So the person grows up to be detached. They don't feel any emotion. All they know is physical violence. So they will try to act it out. And studies have shown that, I've said it already, that children who grow up around this environment are likely, very likely to be violent to other people. Okay. And then there's also the patriarchy issue. I don't know, when we mention that then some people become jitsu, they become uncomfortable, but please, it is real. It is real. When you live in an environment where it endorses a uh, white beating, it endorses, it, it makes a uh, marriage an avenue for like sex, whether the, the, the woman likes it or not, she must give sex. And I always ask, why would a wife, like let's take in the marital, because there's marital rape too. Why would a wife happily have sex with her husband when she's angry with him? Or when she's not happy? Okay, I don't know for the uh, Hadith students and then the scholars here, okay? But my interpretation of that Hadith that says that, I don't know whether it is true, but if it is true, I think the man must position himself in a certain way to enjoy that right from his wife. You must position yourself in a certain way to enjoy that right. You can't take it by force. And like when I think about this, it takes my it take it took my mind back to when we were growing up. When you live, you are in the compound house. You see that the man will be beating the wife in the morning, but she she gives birth by heart. It means that inside the room, he forces her to have sex. Okay. 
and sex in marriage should be consensual. You shouldn't force it on the person. And this, these are some of the ills of uh, patriarchy. Okay, the 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 belief that uh, the belief that women must submit to to men. The belief that women must submit to men. Okay, so uh, when a, a woman tries to like assert her agency, she too, uh, agency means that. She, wa she wants to show that she can also make a choice for herself, okay? Someone who has grown up in a patriarchal environment, let's say for a man who has grown up in a patriarchal environment, he will feel uh, insulted by a woman who tries to show that she has a say, okay? And like I said, when he gets angered, he will use sex as a punishment. So we'll talk about uh, victim blaming. Victim blaming. So I've mentioned all the all that uh, some of the things that society says that goes to blame the victim. Okay, it doesn't end there. In certain jurisdictions, when you get raped as a woman, when you get raped, your family member must kill you. It's either you commit suicide or your family member must kill you. They call it honor killing. It happens in places like Jordan, Pakistan, and those places. Honor killing. So if you are raped, they say it's like you are you are soiling the reputation of the family. So it's either you kill yourself. If you don't kill yourself, a family member will kill you. Or you are forced to marry the person that raped you. To, for, uh, because of family name. Okay. And a research, a research in Jordan in uh, 1995 showed that of the 60% uh, of rape cases, 60% of the rape cases where the victim died. They, they, they found gunshot wounds on the victims. And this, most of these gunshot wounds were inflicted by the victim's brother. I've actually watched a movie where a lady fell in love with his father's employee. Sorry, her father's employee. And then the father refused. So she ran away with the man. They got married and had a child. But the, the father made the brother look for her. He went to the city where she was in, and they killed her. It's, they call it honor killing. So, what do you do? What do we do? What, 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 what should we do? Okay. What, what, what I would urge all of us to do is to stop making those comments. At least I've been able to provide you with data that shows that rape is not the fault of the, of the victim. It is the rapist. So when you hear rape happening uh, uh, around you, hold the victim, uh, the rapist responsible. In your own small way, try to find justice for the victim. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, we can't end the rape culture. We will not be able to end it. To keep it will, it, will, it will continue growing. Okay, and unfortunately, you, it may happen in your house. And earlier on, I told you that most of most rape happen in the domestic setting. So be careful who you trust. Be careful who you trust. Okay, and then the I don't know our persistent effort to shy away from uh, sex education yeah. is also part of the problem. At seven years, if I had known that, if I had had some sex education, okay, I would have come back to tell my mother that someone did this, but I didn't understand it. 
till date, we still shy away from uh, teaching our children the correct name of their sex organs. We give them uh, code names and pet names. Your husband should, uh, sorry, your, your, your child should know their parts. So that when someone goes there, he's able to tell you that this person touched my hair. Okay, and it's about time we start giving our, 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 our children some education. For me, on my part, what I'm doing is that I have told, I've, yes, I started educating my child about uh, sexual violence, rape, and all of that. He knows that his sex organ or his part is for him. Nobody is supposed to touch his body. Even me, I'm not supposed to touch him in a certain way. He knows that. Okay. He also knows that when someone tries to do that, he has to report. It means that the person doesn't love him. The person wants to hurt him. So he has to report it. Okay. And then I think the ultimate, the ultimate in all of this is for us to start respecting people's body. Bodies. Okay. And then try to do away with this uh, culture of uh, sexualizing, especially female bodies. You objectify them. You objectify them. I remember when I moved to Canada, like, like when I moved there, when I moved to Canada, I tried to uh, go for jogging. And the first day I tried to go for, go for jogging, I was passing and there was this guy on motorbike. Sorry, bicycle. When he got to where I was, he stopped, turned and looked at me and he said, hey, that's all we mean, I'm Right. It means that he doesn't respect the woman's body. What he knows is that the woman is for sex. When he saw me, the whole human being standing there, he didn't see that, oh, I'm going for jogging. Oh, I'm a human being. What he's going to say will hurt me. No, he just saw someone with a vagina that if he gets, he will have sex with. Okay. And then, please, uh, there, are, there are support centers. Okay, so if you've heard about DOS, yes, if you hear any rape case or ass assault case around you, get uh, into contact with them. They will help you. Is that okay? There are issues with uh, policy in the, in the country recently. Okay. And I'm sure uh, uh, in, in some few years it will be addressed. But in the meantime, in our own small way, let's try to now do it. There's this problem of uh, uh, when someone gets raped and then you go to the hospital to acquire a doctor, a medical report, you're supposed to pay some money. Okay. And for people in the rural areas who are financially handicapped, economically, they yeah, are. Yeah, let's take they are not able to pay those money. There was one news item of Joy Effect where the girl, I think she was 12 or 13 years, she couldn't walk, walk straight. She opened her legs like this. When she got raped, raped by a man in the area and they took her to the hospital, the doctor demanded that they pay 300 Ghana before they give her the, the medical report. And it is with the medical report that she can go and make the police case. And they didn't have that money, so she went back home. And they gave her paracetamol. Okay. And we should, we should also consider the effects of uh, rape on the victim. It, it has far-reaching effects on the, on the victim. Apart from the physical defects, for, some, for the uh, baby I spoke about, now she can't, she has, a, what do you call it? In, they say, they call it incontinence. She can't hold, uh, she doesn't know when she wants to urinate. She doesn't know when she wants to go to the toilet. It just comes. Her system has been destroyed. We find out about stories where people get raped and their wounds have to be brought out. Okay, that is the physical uh, effect. We have the psychological where the person goes uh, through trauma, okay? I've already told you that 
children who are molested when they are young, most of them grow up to become molested too. They're molesters. Yes. So that's one of the effects. It becomes imprinted in their, in, their, in their mind. All they know is that sex is about violence. So they grow up and then try to act it out. Okay. And then there's um, the problem of uh, loss of self-esteem. Because of some of the things we say, we shame uh, rape victims. We even, we even shy away from marrying them. We shame them. We call them, oh, she's used. And we say all sorts of things about them. Okay. So psychologically, it affects them. It makes them lose uh, self-esteem and self-confidence. Okay. And it impedes their education education, and then their economic development. Because when someone gets raped, let's say someone who works gets raped, it affects their work hours. For the time that the person has been raped, the person cannot go to, go to work. And when the rape happened in the workplace, it becomes worse. It means that you have to go and face your rapist every day. So some people, they stop their work. Some have to move, up, move from their area change areas. So it means that they use they lose their social connections. Okay, so rape has far reaching effects. So when we hear rape, please let's think about these things. Let's think about these things rather. Rather than what the victim do what uh, what what the victim did to warrant her being he her, he or she being raped. And please like I said we are all not safe. We are all not safe. I told someone that someone who was trying to play the game, uh, the card that oh, it's mostly women that are. I said, hey, my friend, now, excuse me to say, innocents are becoming attractive homes too. They are becoming attractive. People are getting attracted to innocents. So don't be deceived. Okay, yes, thank you very much.